The reason I'm prioritizing uh, the work on this car and then this car is because uh, this car makes me money. I'm an Uber driver, so I drive people all the time. So uh, this car needs to be in the top shape all the time. But good thing is it's a Prius. It doesn't need a whole lot of maintenance. I like this monster here. But uh, yes, this one is funner to drive. <laughs> Not in traffic, though. I would prefer driving this one in traffic. And this one gets like double the gas mileage of this one, so it's definitely uh, better to rack up the miles on this one. Uh, pretty sure, uh, pretty soon, uh, this one is uh, this one is almost at 111,000 miles. This one is catching up real fast to this one here. <laughs> and this one's a uh, well, I mean, this one's a much newer car, but uh, it's a, a lot better shape than this car. At least the body on this car. There's uh, a lot of scratches on this car. I don't know why. But, uh, I mean, it's just it's an old car. That's what happens to old cars, they get scratched. So, uh, yeah, so. so I might as well just do a little vlog on this. So what I gotta do first is take this little um, shroud out. Plastic shroud dealy. I'm taking these little pins out. They come out like that, you unscrew them and you just pull them out. They should pop out. They should pop out. Sometimes they don't like to pop out, see? They may break something, I don't know. And there's like, one, two, three, four, five, or six of them. So I'm just gonna make a little vlog here on it. I I know there's a there's a dude that that has uh, made a movie already on how to do this. So I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel here. And there's uh, different ways to do this. The whole shroud un unbolted, unclipped, and it just comes out like that. Pretty simple. Let's place that down somewhere safe. And there it is. I have full access. It's kind of dumb how like uh, how um, all this is uh, connected and everything, you know? Um, it hides the radiator cap, you know? Uh, the, the, the radiator is really loose. Look at... Not good. So, supposedly... Supposedly there's a, um, in here there's a, there's a, um, a bleed valve that we're going to have to work with to get all the air out of the radiator. So first I have to make sure and figure out like which, because I know the radiator, I think the radiator is sectioned off into two parts. One of them is for the inverter and one of them is for the, the engine. So I have to make sure and drain the, the engine, not the inverter. <laughs> All right, so one of the first things I've done is uh, I put the car in um, high heat, high he uh, in heater, the highest temperature. So what you got to do is just move the temperature up until it gets past 85, and it goes to high. And it's uh, supposedly it lets all the hot water go through the the heater core. I don't know if that's true. If there's a little valve that goes through the the heater core, um, but uh, that that let, lets the flow go in and out. But um, uh, I'm not sure. I don't think that's the way it works, but <laughs> but uh, that's what they tell you to do. So maybe there is on this car. I'm not sure. So I've gone ahead and done that, and it's nice and hot. So supposedly, um, if you got air in your cooling system, um, this the heater will not get hot. So that's one way to tell if you got all the air out. All right, kill it. So the first thing I'm gonna do uh, after that is. Uh, I'm gonna go drain the coolant. So there's three places to drain the coolant on this. There's uh, one on the back of the engine block. That's why I have the the car on the on the ramps right now. And uh, there's the there's a thermos th that stores the hot coolant. And and then there's a um, and then there's the radiator. So like I said, there's there's two parts. There's two parts of the radiator. I think I want to do the radiator first. There's a there's an upper part and a lower part, so you can right, see here. So there it is. So you can see the hose. I've attached the hose to it, but you can't really see where it is. You can kind of see that kind of aluminum-looking thing there. Where the hose is connected. That's where it is, and I gotta drain it from there. So I got this 516 fuel hose, and I just routed it up there. There's actually a little hole here to put it through. Yeah, and uh, there's not a whole lot of room to work with under here. I'm realizing that. Um, it looks like we have to take out some of these panel covers too. 
with this one on the side. That well, there was a lot of vacuum holding it in. Um, I just took the radiator cap. I was like, hey, this is weird. How come, uh, how come it's not draining, right? Like, there it is. Like, it's draining now. But uh, I'm like, hey, why isn't it draining? Uh, well, it's because of freaking... Uh, <laughs> because the the radiator cap was still on and then like once I let it go it just went whoop, it just went straight down I'm like wow there you go so it wasn't draining at all the vacuum was just holding it in it's crazy you would think there would be pressure right but anyway it's draining now yahoo so I gotta go take the panels off underneath so I can get to still the thermos. drain there's that uh fabulous uh, pink uh, Toyota coolant it actually doesn't look bad. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to tell if it's bad or not, but I mean, it's. I, I think this hose is dirty. That's why there's a bunch of water. I mean, stuff floating around in it. But it's too late. I gotta change it now. But uh, yeah, you're only supposed to change this every 100,000 miles or something. Um, I think this might have been changed already. Because so I had the car at. Uh, I bought the car at 90,000. It may have been changed again. I'm not sure. But, uh, better safe than sorry, right? So I've gone ahead and taken this panel off. Actually, you only need to take these off. This one, this one. There's another one over here, right here. And then it gives you access to the thermos canister where all the hot coolant is pumped into after you turn it off. Well, I think that's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool device to have on a car. Um, it's, it's brilliant, if you ask me. Unless you don't drive your car every day. Um, so. This is the drain dealy here, and uh, this is where you're supposed to drain the thermos, and uh, and this you're supposed to disconnect this uh, electrical connector here. So we'll just wait for this to finish draining, and then we'll get on that. Plan is uh, is uh, I got a. Um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to measure how much comes out of the, the coolant system. So what we're gonna do is uh I got uh I got my coolant here. Toyota super long life coolant. Oh, good for a hundred thousand miles. The pink stuff, the good stuff. Very expensive. And it's it's already diluted, so uh you lose even more money. <laughs> Thanks Toyota. Um and then I have these uh, gallon jugs here. So what I'm gonna do is uh what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour uh the coolant that's draining out right now into these jugs and then uh and we're going to measure how much comes out so like if i got if i drained a gallon then i'm going to have to remember like hey i drained the gallon i haven't used up a whole gallon yet so i've got to keep on uh try to bleed the system and stuff but uh, it's still coming out all right I'm still... step down here It's a little bit dirty. There's some stuff that came out of it. Um, I don't know if that's from the dirty hose that I used or not. Yeah, actually, actually I think it is. It is dirt. <laughs> well, definitely don't want to put that back in the coolant. So that was about just like half a gallon right there. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, draining the thermo thermos. All right, there it is. It's draining. As you can see, it's making quite a mess too while while it's doing it. <laughs> I was wearing uh, safety glasses because I got it all over my uh, all over my eyes. Looks like it's already stopping now. That wasn't much that came out of there. <laughs> all right, well, so we'll just let that do its thing. Some kind of foam thing just fell out. Anyway, um, so. One thing uh, that the little uh, Prius uh, coolant change guide mentioned is uh, to mark the level of the coolant that you um, drain. So this, I'm going to label this Ray 
58 tor. A little arrow right there. It says the top of the line is where it is. So that's how much I know. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use the other jug first. We'll see. Uh, yeah, it's coming out. It's coming out real slow though. It stopped. Uh, it stopped dripping. It just. It didn't even like trickle to a stop. It just stopped dripping. Period. I'm gonna go ahead and close this guy. You can tell that coolant is nice and hot because you can see steam coming out of it. Trying to hang off of there. I'm gonna go drain it. So yeah, just about a gallon on this one. So go ahead. Yeah, that water that comes out of the thermos is indeed very warm. I mean, I had just driven the car before I got here. Like you can see, the, the plastic is starting to distort from how hot the stuff is. Um, okay, so that the last thing to drain is the um, the radiator. Um, not the radiator, the block. So I've already go ahead and attached the hose to the block. <clears throat> I. I only have two gallons of coolant, so I'm hoping uh, not more than a gallon, half a gallon comes out of there. And I still have to drain the reservoir. So, uh, worst comes to worst, I can put distilled water in there. But uh, it's already pre-diluted, so I'm not supposed to do that. But, uh, so you can see up there. You can kind of see up there. There's the drain plug. I already have the hose hooked up. It's a 516th fuel hose I'm using. Pretty much, uh, you look for the CV boot. Yeah, you look for the CV boot that's on the passenger side, or on the right side, or uh, yeah, look for it. See that? See where the exhaust manifold is, or exhaust headers? Wow, they're actually headers. Just pipes. Um, yeah. So underneath that that runner there, I guess the number two runner from the right. Um, is where the where the where you're supposed to drain it. So, all right. And I think you use a 10 mil to do it. Oh, I'm gonna go do it and then I'll let you know. Why <laughs> but I got 10 mil in my hand right now? And yeah, the block is really hot. It kind of burned my glove open like this. It's freaking crazy. So like, be careful if you just ran the car. All right. So I cranked it open and it looks like uh, not a whole lot is coming out. <laughs> There's something coming out, but not just nothing. Eh. So I don't know. I wouldn't even bother to try the back. I'm gonna try to loosen it a little more. But yes, it was indeed a 10 millimeter too. Yeah. So I went ahead and loosened it some more, and uh, nothing is coming out anymore. So I think uh, I think that's it. Just a, just a little bit, like a tiny bit came off. Maybe if I take the plug off, I'm gonna just straight up take the plug out and see what happens. There could be coolant gushing out everywhere. Okay, I've loosened it more. Still nothing coming out. I'll just take it out and nothing should come out, right? Yeah, so that's what the plug looks like. Funny looking thing. It's brass. So, nope, nothing came out. Negligible amount. Yes, yeah, so it definitely helps if you have a lift when you're working on this. This is why you pay the big bucks for the auto shops. All right, so I go ahead and put it back in. And I'm gonna go tighten it up with the wrench and then we're gonna start filling it up. The fun part is from what I hear. So so that's pretty much it. That's all, pretty much all that came out. Um, it looks like about a gallon, uh, almost a gallon. Yeah, almost a gallon and a half. So two gallons should be more than enough to fill it up. But uh. I don't know how we're going to figure out 
Yeah, well, I d we definitely know that we should go through a, a one bottle of coolant. If you're if you're if the the coolant isn't going in and it's at a at a gallon, then you're in trouble. But uh, also, what I want to do, I think also what I want to do is uh, I'm gonna go drain the. Oh, you can't. Son of a diddly. <laughs> All right. You can't just stick a hose. I was gonna be smart and everything and stick a hose in there and suck it out with the vacuum pump, but. Apparently you can't do that. And I can't even tell where the level is on this. I think I need to clean it. Oh yeah, no, this is coolant in there. So that's gonna retain some coolant right there. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you maybe if you stick the um, I'm surprised this is even out. Yeah, if you um, I think if uh. If you stick a, um, this, I have a vacuum pump here. If you use the vacuum pump and you suck it from here, um, you might be able to get the coolant out of the reservoir. I don't know if you should, if you have to do that or not. I, I don't know. I would imagine the the coolant is it, it does circulate, so you probably do want to do that. All right. So what I have gone and done is I've taken this hose out here for the coolant reservoir, and since it's uh, it's at the very bottom it'll suck all the coolant out and I got hooked up to the, my little vacuum handy vacuum pump here and I was lucky luckily enough the hose the clear hose that comes out of it it fits inside of the hose for, uh, for the coolant reservoir so you just go ahead and pump that and it should start coming out see That's a good amount of uh, suction to get it out though and it's coming out nice and pink but uh, this is working too. It's just, uh, it's just not a lot of suction, so you're gonna have to keep at it. <laughs> well, you can see we have like half the cup. In Found the hours. better trick. So, so since the hose is connected to the bottom, uh, the very bottom of the reservoir, if you move the hose lower than the reservoir, it will start just automatically draining into it. And then I just left it down and like, hey, it's draining. I'm like, cool. <laughs> so that's how I got. This is my second bottle. So. Here we go. All right, so there you see, it's filling up with coolant. It's kind of that. Um, it's like when you're, you know, siphoning something. Pretty cool. And it's not even like, like I mean, this is kind of. The, I mean, I guess the lower you get it, the the more will come out. All right. Now, before I make a mess here, I'm gonna. Oh yeah, and then if you want it to stop, you just pull it higher. So I'll show you real quick. So if you don't have a vacuum pump, or if you just have the vacuum, you don't want to use the vacuum pump like I was doing, this actually works much better. So you're kind of using gravity to do it for you. All right, so it's pretty much full. You just pull it up, see, and then you see the see the coolant go back into the hose. Excellent, right? Excellent. Just drain, it just drains back into the reservoir. You just keep on doing that until it's empty. So I went, uh, I think I drained about like five, five or six uh, of these little cups into there. You can see how much, uh, oh wow, actually quite a bit. I went up from, from halfway to about a three quarters. So uh, we're just under like, just under two gallons is what we should use. So if you're not using uh, most of that coolant, then uh, something is wrong. <laughs> That's how you know. But uh, I don't know. There may be some more in there, but I can't get it out. It doesn't want to go out anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this bad boy. Put it back into where it goes before. And be very careful. Um, this radiator neck here is very, very flimsy. It's uh, very not the best design Toyota. So make sure you support it with your hand or something when you're pushing it in. There you go. I would uh, maybe just put a zip tie around that too. Or you would uh, maybe just throw that leak. So that's it. Um, now it's time to just start uh, filling it up with coolant.